Hi, I'm James, and today I'm taking a look at what is probably one of the most uh, exciting laptops for me to have been looking at in quite some time. And this is the HP MV 13 inch X360 13AY 0008NA. And the reason this is exciting is because that this is the first laptop that I have been able to get my hands on which is based on the new Ryzen 4000 series of APUs. Uh, in this case that is the 4500U and it is paired up with uh, 8 gigs of DDR4 3200 memory, um, a 256 gigabyte SSD and a 1080p display in a convertible uh, chassis, hence the X360 name. So just unpacking everything and what we will find in here is first of all we have the laptop itself which is very similar, so I had previous, well I still have I should say, a 15 inch X360 machine based on the Intel processor and this is therefore similar chassis design uh, but in a 13 inch form factor. We also have in there the power cable, setup instructions and also because this laptop does not have, um, does not have uh, HDMI output it has just USB-C which is used both for connectivity of devices. It does have USB-A ports as well um, but we get a USB-C to HDMI adapter included as well. So looking at the laptop itself uh, it has this nice sort of dark grey finish to it uh, which I'm quite a fan of. Uh, my previous MV is silver and I will show those side by side in a minute but opening it up so we can see a fairly complex, uh, compact layout, so obviously we have no numpad but we have nice chiclet style keys, um, obviously relatively slim bezels on this particular machine. We have a fingerprint reader uh, here for logging in and out of the machine and for you know, authenticating. Uh, webcam at the top and then looking at the sides as mentioned we have on this side a USB-C and a USB-A. The USB-A is slightly hinged, we have a headphone jack and then again on this side another USB-A slot which is hinged down, a micro SD reader and the power connector. Flipping the laptop over and looking at the underside of it and you can see we have speaker grills here and fan uh, or air intake venting here. So when you're using this on a fabric surface, of course, it will be trying to draw air in through the base here. Um, so, but because this is a convertible form factor, if you're using it on fabric, you may find, particularly if you're just watching videos or something, having it flipped around like this and using it in the convertible form means that those vents will be on the top and therefore not uh, blocked by fabric or whatever surface you're working on. So having taken a quick look at the sort of physical aspects of the machine, if we just bring in my old 15 inch uh, MV system. So obviously, first thing we can see, size comparison, this is a significantly more compact machine as you'd expect. Obviously the screen is smaller, but also they have slimmed down the bezels on this 13 inch model. Compared to the 15 inch, obviously you lose that numpad. Compared to the 15 inch machine, obviously you are on the 13 inch giving up that numpad. Um, you're also finding that the speakers are on the base of the unit, whereas on the 15 inch they are along the top section here. Uh, B&O branded speakers in both of these, I believe. Um, although, of course, they're going to still be fairly small uh, laptop speakers regardless. And also the thing that we're giving up compared to this larger machine is that in the 15 inch machine we have a GeForce MX150 graphics card. However in this we have the Ryzen 4000 series APU. 
uh, which is built on a 7 nanometer process with Radeon graphics. So hopefully we should find good integrated graphics performance compared to this larger unit's more powerful discrete card, or more power hungry and potentially more powerful discrete card, but the uh, older 8th generation Core i5 processor and uh, Intel UHD 620 graphics in that when we're not using the G4. So having gone through and just done the basic setup of the machine, and what we can see is we have a fairly standard HP install uh, with Windows 10, and if we just take a look at the system settings, we can confirm that this is a AMD Ryzen 5 4500U with Radeon graphics, 8GB of RAM, and that in this case is soldered to the mainboard, so it is not upgradable. You have to buy the machine with the amount of memory that you want. So if you're wanting 16GB, you would have to buy, at the moment, I think it is the A4700U base SKU, so buying the more powerful Ryzen 7, um, a little bit, well, quite a bit more money, and that will get you 16 gigs of RAM out of the box. Um, but I've gone just with the 8 gigabyte SKU with the Ryzen 4500U. Um, we can also then confirm, so looking in CPU Z, this shows us it is the Ryzen 5 Mobile 4500U. And looking at the memory tab, we can see this is in a dual channel configuration and it is running at DDR4 uh, 3200 speeds. Uh, so this is an optimal configuration for the integrated graphics on this platform. Uh, obviously if it was configured single channel that would be very disappointing because you weren't able to add a second DIMM, but it is in there as we would expect it. Looking at other details of the machine, and if we look in apps and features, so we can see HP are pre-installing a little bit of um, sort of things that we don't necessarily want in here. So we do have, uh, we've got Amazon and Booking.com links, Dropbox. We also have ExpressVPN, which is taking up 200 megabytes. I'm going to be removing that. Um, the HP Jumpstart utilities, things like that, they're sometimes useful for people setting up a new machine. Again, I will be removing. And then we have things like McAfee Live Safe, Personal Security, Again, not a fan of McAfee, those will be coming straight off of this machine. So overall, um, I'd say the screen on this first thing, um, obviously being a touchscreen, it is uh, quite a reflective design, um, but it is lovely thin bezels on it. Uh, obviously a bit of a chunky one down the bottom here where the HP logo is, but at the sides they've really thinned these down compared to my old MV15. And that's helped shrink the chassis. Um, so it's nice and compact. Uh, you do have the backlit keyboard uh, and being an IPS display you get really nice, I mean both of these cameras are set up off center um, but there is really, as I move around, there is little to no color shift. It's a really nice display on this. Some people will say it's only 1080p. In terms of sort of battery life and everything else that doesn't bother me. I, I'm quite happy with that. If we then say shut the machine down, so machine switched off and powering it back up, and we should see nice fast startup time. A couple seconds into the BIOS, and booting through to the desktop. And that's really quite nice and quick. Um, you know, obviously, if you use sleep or anything, that would be even faster. But that's a nice startup time um, overall for the machine. So this particular system came in at eight hundred pound as I ordered it. Uh, I am getting some cash back from HP via Quidco on that, um, although not huge amounts because there aren't any great deals at the moment. But I'm really excited to be getting this and testing it. Um, and Let's run just a quick Cinebench test on it, just to see how that performs. We have here, so this chip is actually six cores, six threads, so although the Ryzen chips support uh, simultaneous multi-threading, or SMT, or hyper-threading as Intel term it, that is not enabled on these uh, R5-4500U chips, but uh, unlike the 
uh, i5 1035G4 chip that I have, which is four cores, eight threads. So it's working on more simultaneously on the Intel chip, but on here it's dedicating CPU cores um, so it's not spreading them across two threads. And we can see here it's progressing quite quickly through this. Um, I remember when Cinebench R15 came out on my big desktop, I'd have been thrilled with it running like this. And so on the i5 10th uh, generation that I tested, I got around 630 uh, for the score on this. And we can see here this has completed it with a score of 824. So the six core uh, non hyper threaded or non SMT architecture here, giving it an advantage over uh, the quad core hyper threaded uh, Ice Lake chip in this particular task. Now, obviously one of the most exciting aspects of these Ryzen 4000 chips is their integrated graphics performance. And so we're just taking a look in Grand Theft Auto 5 here using the built-in benchmark in the game. And we're running this at 720p and low detail settings. And what we can see is frame rates are actually really good. Um, compared to the Ice Lake chip, which I have tested, and you can find the performance testing on my channel, uh, that was averaging around 45 frames per second through this section where we have the plane flying through and then some action on the ground. And by comparison, the Ryzen 4500U is achieving an average frame rate of 82 frames per second. Uh, so that is a pretty significant difference. Um, we will definitely be seeing a benefit there in frame rates, particularly um, if you wanted to start pushing the detail settings up a little bit higher to get the game looking better. Uh, but also if you are playing, you know, particularly GTA Online or um, any of the more intensive scenes in the single player, this is going to give you a much better, more smooth experience. So really nice to see that performance playing out. Looking in uh, Crystal Disk Info, we can see this is a 256 gigabyte uh, SSD, NVMe, PCI Express 3.0, only two lanes on this drive, which will limit its maximum performance. Um, obviously some devices are four PCI Express lanes, however um, in terms of thermals and everything else there is a trade-off there and uh, perhaps the balance of having the, the slightly slower SSD is favourable for battery life and everything else. And if we run the Crystal Disk Mark test, and we're just going to run a short single pass 1GB test here on the sequential read. And so that gives us about what we would expect for a PCI Express uh, two times device, so about 1.5 gigabytes per second on read, and then as the test just completes on the right as well. And I would expect that to be slower on a 256 gig drive, and it is indeed uh, 850 megabytes a second for writing. Um, but still, not a bad result. I will look at uh, how you can fit a larger SSD into this, and also you would expect, say, a model coming with a 512 gig SSD, as I believe the next model above this with the 16 gigs of RAM does, would also give you a bump up in that right performance due to having more channels. It could potentially even come with a PCI Express uh, 3.0, but four lane device. I will be doing lots of performance testing with this uh, particular laptop, particularly comparing uh, to the previous generation, uh, 8th gen, Core i5 that I have here in the MV15 and also a 10th generation Ice Lake chip, both in general applications and gaming. So do be sure to hit subscribe if you want to see more videos as I post them. Like the video if you found it useful and let me know in the comments what you would like to see me testing because I will be trying to take that on board and getting tests run on what people want to see. Thanks for watching.